Hey guys, today we gonna talk about radiation. So, what is it? Radiation is the emission or transmission of energy in the form of waves or particles through space or through a material medium. All matter is composed of atoms. Atoms are made up of various parts, the nucleus contains minute particles called protons and neutrons, and the atom's outer shell contains other particles called electrons. The nucleus carries a positive electrical charge, while the electrons carry a negative electrical charge. Radiation is often categorized as either ionizing or non-ionizing depending on the energy of the radiated particles. Ionizing radiation carries more than 10 electron volts, which is enough to ionize atoms and molecules and break chemical bonds. As you can in this chart, visible light and below are all types of non-ionizing radiation. Above visible light is ionizing radiation like ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma rays. I know some people really freak out because you know there is fear associated with the word radiation but I think that at a certain level they are right to freak out but not much because not every type of radiation is harmful. Like I said that ionizing radiation carries 10 electron volts of energy, which is enough to break the break chemical bonds and rip off the electron from its orbit, so yes, it's harmful to us. But on the other hand, we have microwaves, which help us to heat up the food quickly. What is the source of this ionizing radiation? Number one is gamma radiation emission. It's a nuclear process that occurs to rid an unstable nucleus of excess energy after most nuclear reactions. Both alpha and beta particles have an electric charge and mass, and thus are quite likely to interact with other atoms in their path. Gamma radiation, however, is composed of photons, which have neither mass nor electric charge and, as a result, penetrates much further through matter than either alpha or beta radiation. Some sources of gamma rays are solar flares. The first confident observation occurred in 1972. Pulsars and magnetars. The gamma ray sky is dominated by the more common and longer term production of gamma rays that emanate from pulsars within the Milky Way. Sources from the rest of the sky are mostly quasars. Number 2 is X-ray. X-rays are electromagnetic waves with a wavelength less than about 10 power minus 9 m. A smaller wavelength corresponds to higher energy according to the equation E equals hc over lambda. E is energy, h is Planck's constant, c is the speed of light, lambda is the wavelength. When an X-ray photon collides with an atom, the atom may absorb the energy of the photon and boost an electron to a higher orbital level or if the photon is extremely energetic. It may knock an electron from the atom altogether, causing the atom to ionize. Generally, larger atoms are more likely to absorb an X-ray photon since they have greater energy differences between orbital electrons. The soft tissue in the human body is composed of smaller atoms than the calcium atoms that make up bone, so there is a contrast in the absorption of X-rays. X-ray machines are specifically designed to take advantage of the absorption difference between bone and soft tissue allowing physicians to examine the structure in the human body. Number 3 is Alpha Radiation. They interact with matter strongly due to their charges and combined mass, and at their usual velocities only penetrate a few centimeters of air or a few millimeters of low-density material. This means that alpha particles from ordinary alpha decay do not penetrate the outer layers of dead skin cells and cause no damage to the live tissues below. Alpha radiation is dangerous when alpha emitting radioisotopes are ingested or inhaled. Number 4 is beta radiation. Beta minus radiation consists of an energetic electron. It is more penetrating than alpha radiation but less than gamma. Beta radiation from radioactive decay can be stopped with a few centimeters of plastic or a few millimeters of metal. It occurs when a neutron decays into a proton in a nucleus, releasing the beta particle and an antineutrino. Number 5 is neutron radiation. Neutron radiation consists of free neutrons. These neutrons may be emitted during either spontaneous or induced nuclear fission. Neutrons are rare radiation particles. They are produced in large numbers only where chain reaction fission or fusion reactions are active. This happens for about 10 microseconds in a thermonuclear explosion, or continuously inside an operating nuclear reactor. Production of the neutrons stops almost immediately in the reactor when it goes non-critical. Now let me know to tell me what impact that the human body has if it receives ionizing radiation. It depends upon the dose that the person receives. If the person receives a high dose, 
then the ionizing radiation will break your cellular structure apart and you'll get symptoms like nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, headache, fever, dizziness and disorientation. This will be followed by a latency period. During this period, the person appears to recover but they actually do not. This lasts for a day or two. After that, the cellular damage begins to manifest, the immune system fails. Bone narrow dies. Then, within two days to three weeks, the person is dead. And that's all for now. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.